Welcome back. I'm Brian Hayes, and this is Automation of the Week. This is our series where we show you step-by-step -step how to build out different automations to improve your processes. This week, I'm going to show you how to take the line items from an opportunity and automatically create assets for that account when that opportunity closes. This is also a good example of how to use a loop within a flow. So the reason why you might want to do this is, first of all, if you're using assets at all. The asset object within Salesforce is great for tracking customers that have purchased different items and also tracking the status of those items. It's useful if you have a warranty attached to a product that you've sold, you have a maintenance scheduled, or there's some sort of expiration date. Whenever you want to track the products that a company has purchased and associate that directly with the account, the asset object is perfect for that because it sits right in between the account and the product that they purchased. Now, the problem with assets generally is they don't get automatically generated when an opportunity closes. And for most of the companies that are using assets, they want those to be automatically generated from the products on that opportunity. So that's what we're going to use flow for to save you a lot of time. So step number one is create a new flow. This is going to be a record triggered flow. And the trigger for it is going to be an opportunity being closed. So for object, choose opportunity. And we'll say whenever a record is updated, let's have that with a condition that stage equals closed one. Now, of course, you can modify this if it should only apply to certain types of opportunities. You can add those additional conditions here. So what we want is we want this flow to run when an opportunity is updated to be closed one, not just every time it's edited, it happens to be closed one. Now, optimize the flow for actions and related records and hit done. Our first step is going to be to get the opportunity line items. So choose get records. I'm going to call this get line items. The object that we're looking for, it's called opportunity product. And we want all opportunity products where the opportunity ID associated with that record is the ID of the record that started the whole process. So search for our record variable down here and then select ID. Now we could add additional conditions here as well. Perhaps you have some product line items that are actually products and others that are warranties or service packages or something like that. You might not want to create an asset for service package. So you can always filter those out by adding a condition here. I'm not going to worry about sort order. It doesn't typically matter, but you have the ability to impact that here if you want to. And then this is important. We don't want just the first record. We want all the records. We want all line items that are related to this particular opportunity that was just marked closed one, then hit done. Our next step is going to be to loop through those product line items. So hit the plus sign here, choose loop. And then we'll need to name this. So I'm just gonna say loop through products. And the collection variable that we'll choose is the only one that we have. It's opportunity product from our get line items step. And again, the direction that we loop in doesn't really matter. So I'll just leave it at default. Here you can see it's going to loop in a clockwise fashion. And now what we want to do is add two additional steps. We're going to create two different assignment steps. So the first assignment is going to be setting the values for an asset record. And then the second assignment is going to be taking that asset record and putting it in a collection. That way we can loop through all of these different products. And what we end up getting is a collection variable with a bunch of different assets in it. And then we can commit that collection variable to the database all at one time. Now, what would be tempting is just to add a create record step here in the middle of our loop. Like, okay, let's create our asset. You don't want to do that because it's very inefficient and you're going to end up running into limitations as you're looping over different records. So I'm going to show you the better way to do it, which is to use assignment steps, create a record variable, add that record variable to a collection variable. And then outside of the loop is where we're going to push that entire collection of records into the database in one action. Much more efficient, much more scalable. So let's add our next step here. And again, this will be an assignment action. So we're going to assign values to an asset variable. Okay. Now we haven't created this variable yet. So hit new resource, select variable, and we'll call this an asset. The data type should be a record. And then we can choose the object, which of course is going to be the asset object. And we don't want to select multiple values for this one because it's just one asset. We're going to create a collection for all of these assets later. Okay, that looks good. Hit done. 
And now what we're able to do is actually set the specific fields on this particular record variable. So select an asset, that's what we just created. And then if you click on it, you can see all of the different variables that are in this record. So the most important one is gonna be account ID. So I'll select that. Let's add a couple others since we're doing this. The other one that is really important is product. So here's our product ID. And then we'll also wanna add quantity probably. So we know how many that they purchased. And you can carry on and add a number of other fields here too. And you can add custom fields if you'd like. And the last one I'm, I'm gonna choose is the purchase date. Now you could go beyond this and you could add a lot of custom fields to the asset object. You could also fill out the other standard fields that are there, but I think this is a good you know, minimum just to get started. So we want to create an asset that has an account ID that's the same account as the opportunity that we're using. So for the value, you can just choose record account ID. For the product ID, what we need to do is go to the current item from loop. So when you create a loop and you're looping through a collection, it automatically creates this record variable for whatever item you're on in that loop, since it's gonna iterate multiple times. So for this stage in the loop, we'll choose current item and let's choose our product ID from here. There we go. And then quantity, same thing. We wanna choose the current item and then choose quantity. And then for the purchase date, let's use the opportunity close date for that. So we're gonna create an asset record that is related to the account, that's related to the opportunity, that is related to the product for the current item that's in the loop right now, uh, has the quantity from the current item that's in the loop right now, and has a purchase date that is pulled from the close date on our opportunity, and then hit done. So we've just set the values to a variable, hit another plus sign here, and let's add another assignment step. This step is going to be to add the asset to a collection. First thing we need to do here is create a new resource. This is also gonna be a variable, and I'm gonna call it the assets. Data type will be a record variable again, but this time we wanna allow multiple values. This is gonna be our collection. And then choose asset again. So we're essentially just creating this bucket that can hold multiple asset records in it. Then hit done. You can see the variable is already set there in our variable field. And for the operator, change that from equals to add. And then for the value, choose our record variable for an asset. This is the variable where we just set the field values, right? The close date, the account ID, et cetera. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that, that record variable and we're gonna put it in this bucket called the assets. We're putting it in the collection and we're just adding it and then hitting done. And so what will happen is this will complete the loop here. And then if there's another product associated with that opportunity, if there's another one in the collection, it'll go through the loop again and again and again. Each time it goes through, it's gonna take that same one record variable that we created, and it's gonna update the values to it. The account ID is gonna be the same every time, but that product ID is certainly gonna change. And that quantity is probably gonna change. And then it adds those that record into our collection, and then it goes again, updates the fields for our variable, basically copies it when it drops it into this collection. And at the end now, we can create a create record step. Create assets. And how many records do we wanna create? Well, we wanna create multiple. And that means we're gonna to need to choose a collection to create. And we have one right here, the assets. The only other collection we have are the opportunity products from our get line item step. That's what we've already used. We've already looped through those. So choose the assets and then hit done. Now, before we run this flow, there's actually one thing I forgot to add. There's a required field called asset name. So we come back to our, our variable here. Let's add an assignment to make sure that we don't skip that field. Otherwise it'll fail to create. Select an asset one more time. Let's choose name. And here we could just write in any text that we wanted to. But what I'd really like to do is actually include the product name here. So come down to current item from loop and search for product name. There we go. So that's our opportunity product name is now assigned to our asset name. Hit done, hit save, and activate or debug to test it. So I'm in a developer environment, so I'm just gonna come to an opportunity record here, and let's see how this works. We have an opportunity for Herb Erlinger's Winery, and it's got two products, a diesel generator and a service level agreement of bronze. If we update this to closed one, we should see those two assets get created for us. Now to see that, let's go to the account name here 
and we should have a related list for assets. You might have to add this related list to your page layout if you don't already have it. And here we can see we've got these assets and they have the name of the opportunity product record, which was the name of the opportunity plus the name of the product. If we click into one of these, we should see that the purchase date was our close date from the opportunity and that it's also related to a product record. So the big takeaway from this automation of the week is the loop and the importance of not having any database actions within the loop itself. Instead, use these assignment steps to create a record variable, add that record variable to a collection variable, and then create those assets all in one step after the loop. Let me know what different automations you created in the comments below and check in next Tuesday for another automation of the week. Please hit like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.